Okay, so here we're going to look at some of the nervous structures that are present within the abdomen. Just to reorient ourselves, cranial is here, caudal is here. This is the area of the thoracic cavity. And we can see running right along kind of the roof of the thoracic cavity is this structure, and that would be the sympathetic trunk. At the point we kind of get to the caudal most end of the thoracic cavity, we're going to have two nerves leaving the caudal aspect of the sympathetic trunk. And these respectively are going to be the major and minor splanchnic nerves. These are going to be carrying sympathetic innervation down to the celiacomesenteric ganglion and plexus. And as you can see, they're running right over top of this muscular structure, which is going to be the cruce of the diaphragm. The cruce of the diaphragm is just the connection where the diaphragm is inserting onto the dorsal aspect of the abdominal wall near the second to third lumbar vertebrae. If we follow those splanchnic nerves, they will actually lead us, and I'm gonna flip some of the viscera here to assess the other side, because we're gonna follow them to this area right here. So here, again, to reorient, this is our aorta coming through the aortic hiatus of the diaphragm and entering the abdominal cavity. Here we see the first very large artery coming off of the abdominal aorta, and that's gonna be the celiac artery. And then we see the second artery coming off, just caudal to that, that's gonna be the cranial mesenteric artery. Now here we can see this large kind of collection of nervous tissue overlying the celiac and cranial mesenteric arteries. That's gonna be the celiacomesenteric ganglion. It's gonna contain post, or I'm sorry, uh, post-ganglionic sympathetic cell bodies from the sympathetic nervous system. And from that, we will also have a lot of nerves leaving that as the celiacomesenteric plexus. The plexus will be transmitting both parasympathetic as well as sympathetic axons to all of the viscera of the abdominal cavity. It's in this area that we can also see this structure that's sitting just cranial to the cranial pole of the kidney. That is going to be the adrenal gland. And again, kind of going right near the adrenal gland is gonna be this artery, which is the cranial abdominal artery coming up to these hypaxial muscles. Okay, so since we're in this area, we're gonna transition into some of the arteries and we're gonna start with the celiac artery. Again, the first large branch coming off of the abdominal aorta. And the celiac artery is gonna have three major branches coming from it. The first is gonna be this artery we see right here coming towards the spleen. That's gonna be the splenic artery. We then have an artery right here. Sorry, let's clean this out a little bit more. This artery right here that's coming up to the lesser curvature of the stomach on the left side near the cardia. And this artery is the left gastric artery, a direct branch of the celiac artery. The third branch and final branch of the celiac artery is gonna be this deeper artery right here, which is gonna be the hepatic artery. Now we're gonna move quickly to the splenic artery because there's only a few branches coming off of it. Here we see the spleen and the greater curvature of the stomach. This ligament that has been kind of detached from the spleen is a portion of the greater omentum, which is the uh, gastrosplenic ligament. And it's within the gastrosplenic ligament that we're going to see some arteries traversing across towards the fundus and body of the stomach. If these arteries are entering the wall of the stomach, they will be the short gastric arteries. Finally, the splenic artery will also give off a larger artery to run along the greater curvature of the stomach on the left side. So that would be the left 
gastroepiploic, and this has the artery and vein that are both being shown right here. Let's see if I can separate that. There we go. That is our left gastroepiploic artery, leaving the splenic artery and traveling around the greater curvature. Now the left gastroepiploic artery is going to anastomose with a similar named artery that we're going to talk about here in just a second. But I'm going to reorient this to show the branches of the hepatic artery. So now what we've done is we've kind of flipped over and what we're looking at here is the junction of the cranial duodenal flexure and the pylorus. So we're kind of looking right up in between the stomach duodenum and the liver. We can see this artery coming up towards the liver being the hepatic artery. The hepatic artery comes up, gives off branches to the liver, hepatic branches, and then is going to come around this way. And first we're going to get a fairly small branch coming off and coming to the right side of the lesser curvature. And that's going to be the right gastric artery. And after that comes off, the hepatic artery will actually turn into the gastroduodenal artery. It's really tough to kind of see these arteries sometimes because of all of the nerves that are traveling with these arteries. Okay, because essentially the nerves are using these arteries as a highway. So a lot of times you either have to remove or really kind of push these nerves out of the way to see the arteries. But we can see this being the gastroduodenal artery. And it's going to be giving off this large branch coming in between the right lobe of the pancreas and the descending duodenum. That's the cranial pancreaticoduodenal artery. And finally, we'll have this large branch right here, kind of wrapping around and coming up along the greater curvature here. And that's going to be the right gastroepiploic artery. So the right gastroepiploic artery from the gastroduodenal and the left gastroepiploic artery, which was coming from the splenic, are going to anastomose along the greater curvature the left and right gastric arteries will anastomose along the lesser curvature. So those are all of the branches of the celiac artery. And next we will move to some of the branches of the cranial mesenteric artery. While we're here, the first branch we wanna see is coming off directly from that cranial mesenteric artery and is traveling up to the caudal end of the right lobe of the pancreas and the descending duodenum. This artery on the caudal aspect is going to be the caudal pancreaticoduodenal artery. That caudal pancreaticoduodenal artery will come up, ascend, and actually anastomose with the cranial pancreaticoduodenal artery somewhere along the descending duodenum. Okay, pretty much all of the jejunal arteries, all of those jejunal arteries are all coming from the cranial mesenteric artery as well. Let's see here. Okay, let's flip this back over. And now we're going to end with a few other branches of the cranial mesenteric. So I've just reoriented this to show the cranial mesenteric artery here. And now we have this common trunk we see coming off. The common trunk is going to give rise to a couple arteries. And so how we're looking here, again, we have our transverse colon, descending, ascending. So this is gonna be the left colic flexure. This specimen actually looks like it has two middle colic arteries. Both of them are coming over to that left colic flexure. So you could call both of these, or either one of them, a middle colic artery. Next, we have this artery right here that's coming to the right colic flexure. That would be your right colic 
artery. After your right colic artery comes off of that common trunk, it becomes the iliocolic artery. And in this specimen, there's really not much of an iliocolic artery because pretty quickly it splits into this branch, which is traveling and kind of traversing around the ascending colon. That's gonna be the colic branch of the iliocolic artery. You have this artery right here that's coming up and kind of in between the ilium and cecum and coming along the cecum. That's gonna be the cecal artery. And the cecal artery is going to give rise to this artery running along the anti-mesenteric side of the ilium, AKA the anti-mesenteric ileal branch of the cecal artery. The third and final branch of the iliocolic artery is this branch right here, which is coming along the mesenteric surface of the ilium. So that would be the mesenteric ileal branch of the iliocolic artery. So if you know the branching pattern where the middle colic comes to the left colic flexure, the right colic goes to the right colic flexure and the ascending colon, your colic branch of your iliocolic supplies the ascending colon, cecal artery supplies the cecum, and finally your mesenteric ileal branch will supply the mesenteric surface of the ilium. The final artery that's kind of the most caudal back here is going to be, let's see if we can get down here to really get a good view. I'm not sure if we can get that in here. We have this artery right here coming off the caudal most aspect of the abdomen, okay, abdominal aorta. That's gonna be the caudal mesenteric artery. And we see this large collection of nervous tissue around that, and that is the caudal mesenteric ganglion. From the caudal mesenteric ganglion, you will have the right and left hypogastric nerves, which we will definitely be better to, uh, able to see in the next section. The caudal mesenteric artery is gonna give rise to the large artery that's traveling up the descending colon. And that's gonna be the left colic artery that's traveling up the descending colon. It also gives rise to the cranial rectal artery, which we will see traversing caudally along the cranial aspect of the rectum. A few other branches we need to be aware of since we're here include this guy here, which is a direct branch from your abdominal aorta. Since it's a male, this is gonna be your testicular artery. And finally, hasn't been cleaned out yet, but right here on each side of that caudal mesenteric artery, you're gonna have two bilateral artery, or a bilateral artery, one on each side. Those are gonna be the deep circumflex iliac arteries.